a sense of what you have learned. I mean, we talk about now it is infectious. It can be uh, done through the air. Uh, how far can it travel and what needs to be done? Well, lot, lot of que lot of questions there, and uh, you, you expect that this is something which we learned now. Uh, we have a very good understanding of what's happening to the respiratory particles uh, when uh, uh, generated when we speak, when we breathe. They can uh, they are in the air. They can travel meters. They can travel tens of meters uh, in the indoor environment, basically as far as airflow will take them. So we have quite a good understanding of what. This particles do in the air and what can they do in terms of being inhaled. So what should policymakers, what should companies be doing now, what actions need to be taken, uh, bearing in mind that it is difficult to control where air travels? Well, it doesn't start at the companies or organizations. First of all, we need to have a strategy for this. Um, you mentioned WHO before. Well, ideally, we should have a um, statement from the WHO. It is coming. It's almost uh, good now. But it, they still have some qualifiers in the statements of airborne transmission. So uh, from this, we need to have national recognition of airborne transmission and standards changed to uh, specifically in the statement acknowledge that the purpose of this document is the document is to uh, control airborne transmission once this is in the system then the organizations the, the uh, building companies the whoever um, equips the building then has to comply with this kind of uh, regulation so this is a hierarchy of how we'll deal with this process so it doesn't start from individual building what are we going to do there's got to be a system in place Lydia, this, this is a, a very controversial topic. I think up until recently, you, you still have many researchers or even, uh, you know, authorities out there that were saying that the COVID was spread through droplets or objects. Uh, you're suggesting now aerosols are our key source of transmission now. Why has it taken more than a year? Why has it taken more than a year for the CDC and WHO to really agree with you? This is a very good question. History books will be written about this. There was not really that much um, misunderstanding or uh, contradictions between scientists. This was not be, this was wasn't accepted by the decision makers. Why adherence to an old dogma stating that if you are at arm's length, you are safe? All kinds of political reasons. So there, there's a whole cocktail of problems there. Now, whether you call it aerosol, whether you call it droplet, we are really talking about party which are generated from human uh, expiratory activities. These particles range in size, but this is a continuum, and then dependently on the size, they travel uh, shorter distance, they travel longer distance, but um, there, is, uh, there is no division between uh, bigger and smaller, it's a continuum. So, as I said, it's not scientific controversy. It is, if anything, a lack of political will to do something about this. Interesting. And I have to wonder as well, Professor, that the, the, the line that we got from the CDC this week was that if you're vaccinated, then you don't need to wear a mask anymore. Do you think that's the right approach in your view? Well, if people are vaccinated, the probability they would uh, contract the virus is, of course, much smaller. It's not zero, but it's much smaller. Uh, so, therefore, the probability that they would be spreading the virus is it's minimal. Uh, I believe that asking people who were vaccinated to still keep wearing a mask um, is, wouldn't be a good idea because then people would be less um, compliant if they really need to wear a mask. So I agree with this that when people were vaccinated, they should be allowed not to wear masks. Uh, Professor, we're all seeing various variants developing. Do, do you see perhaps uh, the virus, the way we fight the virus will have to change in the foreseeable future? Well, um, now this is going uh, a little bit outside my area of experience. 
expertise. I'm not an expert in virology. All viruses change with time. Uh, the uh, seasonal flu change in time. Uh, so therefore, we need um, vaccination every year to uh, target this particular new strain. So it would be strange to expect that this virus wouldn't be um, changing. It does change. So, But whether it's a new strategy, whether it's a new uh, vaccine which would be adapted to, to the new type of um, uh, virus, new strain, but in terms of the uh, uh, measures we are talking here about um, uh, controlling airborne transmission, they will not change dependently on the virus. We still need to have ventilation. And when we are talking about the ventilation, this is um, uh, efficient and sufficient ventilation. So this is regardless of which strain of the virus we are talking about. L Lydia, what about quarantine camps? Uh, I have to wonder, is, it, is there any reason, given your research, that people can have to quarantine for 7, 14, 21 days if proper ventilation systems are not in place, or does it actually increase the chances of transmission? Well, uh, you, you are, this is this is in the quarantine facilities. Uh, if, uh, I take the, uh, this is the question. Now, yes, the yes. quarantine. Fa yeah, the quarantine facilities, um, for example, in Australia, there are hotels. So those hotels were not designed with uh, infection control in mind. Uh, so. Uh, so therefore, some of them are better for this, some of them are worse. But the most important is that in each case, this specific aspect about, about ventilation, which way air flow goes, is checked and it can be checked. So the most important is that air does not flow uh, from the rooms where the quarantine guests are, doesn't flow to other rooms and doesn't flow to the corridors uh, through any gaps or any uh, openings. So this is the key. If this is prevented, then the facility is safe. Of course, there's still the issue of opening the doors and uh, interaction when uh, people pick up the stuff from the, from the corridor. Th this should be minimized, and there should be some uh, rules about this that not all the doors are open at once. But it can be managed. But with this specific view in mind, ventilation needs to be checked and controlled for this purpose.